Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a very peculiar structure around black holes that we normally don't really talk about. The structure known as the black hole corona. And in this video I wanted to discuss some of the recent discoveries in regards to corona and how it changes our understanding of the black holes and everything that's happening around them. Let's talk about this and welcome to the Math. So typically structures of black holes are kind of shown like this. We have the actual black hole in the middle, we have the black hole shadow as it's known, and an accretion disk orbiting around it. Sometimes some of the simulations show the accretion disk in three dimensions, as it probably is in reality, and in some simulations you also see the so-called astrophysical jets emitted from the black hole center that we currently believe might be generated by the accretion disk around the black hole and are probably related to the electromagnetic field of the black hole and its environment. But other than the accretion disk, the event horizon, the jet, and of course the black hole itself, most of the other simulations and illustrations rarely show anything else in the vicinity of the black hole. But there's actually an extremely important region that we're still kind of learning about and that we sort of know very little about, known as the black hole corona. Now just like other corona in various types of objects, such as for example the solar corona that you see right here, or corona around other stars, or even the corona of different types of galaxies, these um, unusual structures are usually extremely hot and are normally formed by the interaction with the electromagnetic field. So essentially, even though we don't truly understand how corona even around our own sun form, we know that they produce very very hot regions, in case of the sun this is like 2 million degrees celsius, and galactic corona can even reach 10 million degrees celsius, and they also seem to have a kind of a magnetic connection to the object itself, as well as occasionally grow in size, or in case of certain corona, even disappear completely. So in the last few years, a lot of new research has started to investigate these black hole corona and discovered some really incredible things about them. But first of all, what exactly are these black hole corona? Well, even though we technically don't really know just yet, we have some ideas. First of all, we believe that these are very hot regions of electrons with temperatures around a billion degrees, and they also are responsible for producing a lot of high energy x-rays that can then be seen from here on Earth. And that actually makes the black hole corona around a thousand times hotter than the corona around our own sun. And although we have no idea how they form, we know that they can actually be used, as you see in this simulation, to then map the entire black hole and to see things around the black holes with a lot more precision. We also believe that corona are responsible for various types of x-ray flares and a lot of other energetic flares that we usually see from black holes. A lot of which in the last few years have been observed by this beautiful instrument known as NICER on top of the International Space Station. And the flares themselves don't just come from the corona themselves, but also, as we've learned from one of the recent papers that you can find in the description below, some corona seem to be ejected from the black holes, or essentially some corona seem to be destroyed by something, and then reappear after a year or so. In other words, what the scientists in one of the recent papers observed is essentially a dimming and a complete disappearance of activity from a very distant supermassive black hole, suggesting that the corona itself completely disappeared and then slowly reappeared and returned back to normal after around 300 days. But what's interesting is that at some point the black hole itself became much much dimmer, thousands and thousands of times dimmer within only a few days. And it took some time for this black hole to return back to its original brightness. And though currently we don't really obviously know what happened there, one speculation is that maybe some sort of a large star passed relatively close to the black hole and its debris was able to dislodge and essentially completely destroy the corona and of course the accretion disk itself that's usually responsible for forming the corona. And it took roughly a few months for this supermassive black hole to then rebuild its accretion disk and return back to normal, rebuilding its corona as well. In other words, this was possibly what's known as the stellar disruption event, when a star comes really close to the black hole, first destroying the accretion disk, and then creating a new accretion disk from all of the matter that was released from the star. 
At least that's right now the best explanation to what the scientists observed. Another recent study discovered that there's a possibility that these corona might be responsible for all of the unusual high energy neutrinos we're detecting and specifically they might explain the unusual high energy neutrinos detected in Antarctica which I've discussed in another video and this actually did create a lot of chatter about what could have possibly caused this. And one explanation could be the black hole corona that we've never really considered before. These regions around the central black holes are normally very very active but also are filled with a lot of different dust as you see in this simulation. A lot of this dust will often hide other radiation but neutrinos don't interact with matter that much so they will easily escape these regions and thus reach Earth without any problems. They also have a lot of energy but other types of energy will usually get stuck near the black hole or get absorbed by some of the matter orbiting the black hole. So seeing just the neutrinos and nothing else would make a lot of sense if they came from the regions where only neutrinos can escape and everything else gets absorbed. Regions that we usually find in the middle of the galaxy where the central black hole is located. But despite these regions being so extremely energetic and so powerful and also being responsible for us even seeing black holes and also despite the fact that some corona for example can be ejected at like 20% of the speed of light resulting in some of the highest releases of energy in the universe, we still don't even truly know how they form or what shape they have. There are at least two theories here and in some sense maybe both are correct. And this illustration by Dan Wilkins of Stanford University kind of shows you what these two models are. We have the so-called sandwich model which presents the corona as literally sandwiched between the accretion disk around the black hole or the lamppost model which presents corona as a kind of a long tube-like formation that forms through the rotational action of the black hole and the accretion disk itself. We don't really know if black holes just go between these two stages or if one model is more correct than the other but they both seem to make sense because for example a typical release of a corona makes more sense for a lamppost model but also our ability to map a black hole using corona would only make sense if the sandwich model also was kind of part of the black hole structure. So in some sense it could be both models and a typical black hole could be switching between these two corona and it's possible that both exist at the same time. And this of course is important for us to know because it seems like some of the most powerful radiation coming from black holes seem to indeed come from the corona and not from any other region around the black hole. Which actually makes sense because some of the most powerful and the hottest regions in the galaxies are also corona and this also applies to the corona of typical stars. But because we still know so little about them there's still a lot to learn. One of the recent studies for example discovered that it's possible that the size of a typical corona around a supermassive black hole is roughly around 75 million kilometers which is roughly around half the distance of Earth to the Sun so these objects are pretty large. And because it only took about 300 days for the corona to reform completely, it also means that these regions are extremely dynamic and extremely active. Things here happen really really fast. Way faster than we can even imagine. But most importantly this also means that we need to start adding the corona as one of the more important structures to a typical black hole illustration like the one right here. Which of course means that a simulation or illustration of a typical black hole will now get just a little bit more complex. Which also means that it will get even more complex in years to come as we learn more and more about these unusual strange objects. And though with time I'm sure we'll discover more about corona and black holes, for now that's really all we know. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also consider supporting this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. And alternatively you can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that does have a supermassive black hole but unfortunately doesn't have a corona on it but it might in the future. Anyway on that note, thank you for watching, I'll see you tomorrow, space out and as always, bye bye.